Hey there, let's look at this problem. This is from a vibrations book and the author is Thompson. Let's write that down so you know where we got this from. Okay, this one says we've got a spring mass system. So it's got one spring, one mass. So K1 is the spring constant, M is the mass. It's got a natural frequency of F1. And then it says if a second spring with a constant K2 is added in series with the first spring, then the natural frequency is lower to one half F1. We want to find K2 in terms of K1. All right, so first thing we need to do is let's draw out the original system. All right, so we know it's one spring, one mass. So let's put it like this. All right, so there's K1 and M, and I'm looking at frequencies, right, because we've got this F1. Okay, now before we start writing things, let's go ahead and let's remind ourselves of the relationship with omega and frequency. Okay, so the angular frequency we know is 2 pi f, where f is that natural frequency. And then for a spring mass system, we know that omega is also equal to the square root of k over m. Okay, so these are just generic equations right here. All right, so we want to use these for this problem, okay, because we're going to focus in on F here. So for this system, what I want to do is I want to solve for F1, okay, and I know I have both of these. They're both equal to omega, so that means I can say that 2 pi F1 has to equal the square root of K1 over M. And then let's solve for F1. So just bring the 2 pi down here. So we'll have 1 over 2 pi times the square root of K1 over M. So that's the natural frequency for this original system. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a second spring. Now it tells us it's in series, right? So here's our original spring. If it's in series, it's going to follow along right underneath the original spring, right? So now we have K2. And then we're going to have our mass M. Okay, so I need to relate the frequency of this system to the frequency of this one. Okay, well, what I want to do, the easiest thing to do, since these are in series, I want to get an equivalent spring. That way I only have one spring. It'll be easier to deal with. Okay, so if I get an equivalent spring, essentially we'll have that. Okay, so let's find out what this equivalent K is. So these are in series. So if we have springs in series, the way we figure out the equivalent is we do 1 over 1 over the constant of the first spring, so K1, plus 1 over the constant of the second spring, so K2. Alright, so that's just the setup that we would have because it's in series. Alright. So now with this, you can simplify this. So we would need to get, you know, a common denominator on the bottom. And so that would be um, K1, K2, the product, right? And then you would basically just flip it upside down. So that would give us K1, K2 over K1 plus K2. All right, so that's what we would have for our equivalent spring. Okay, so that means if I were to find F2, I'm going to do the same thing I did up here, except for now, um, we would have 1 over 2 pi times the square root of K equivalent over the mass. Okay, with this being K equivalent. Okay, so we've got that part done. I've got this equation, this equation. I need to relate those two together. And how are we going to do that? Well, I'm thinking this right here would be useful. All right? So F2 is going to be 1 half times F1. 
So let's look at that. So F2 is 1 half times F1. So now let's just plug in these equations. And I'm going to keep this as k equivalent for as long as I can because I don't want to have to deal with this fraction yet. Okay, So we're going to have 1 over 2 pi times that square root of k equivalent over m. And that's going to equal 1 half times f1. So that's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k1 over m. Okay, makes sense so far, I hope. Now let's see if anything cancels so we can simplify this a little bit. We've got 1 over 2 pi here on both of these, right? So that goes away. All right, and then we're left, um, let's come over here and write it out. So we're left with a square root of k equivalent over m equals 1 half times the square root of k1 over m. Now what should we do? Mm, remember, we want k2 in terms of k1. So I think what we should do next is square this whole thing to get rid of the square roots. Okay, so let's square this whole thing. So if we do that, we're going to have k equivalent over m, and then that's going to equal 1 fourth, because we have the 1 over 2 here, right, times k1 over m. So we're getting closer. Now what should we have? Or what should we do next? Well, first of all, it looks like these m's are going to cancel, right? So let's just get rid of those. So we don't have those. Now that we've done that, we can't really simplify too much more. So we need to plug in our k equivalent. Okay, so that's this equation right here. So let's put that in, and then we'll see where we go next. All right, so k equivalent equals 1 fourth times k1. I want k2 in terms of k1. So basically, I need to solve this for k2. All right, so let's see what we should do. So let's take this and multiply here on the right side. And that gives us k1, k2 equals 1 fourth k1 times k1 plus k2. And it looks like we've got something that will cancel, right? This k1 cancels with that. That leaves us with k2 is 1 fourth k1 plus k2. And then last thing, I need to group up my k2 terms, right? Because I have one here and I have one here. So I need them both on the same side. So if this is 1 fourth k2, I move it over. Uh, basically, we have 4 over 4 minus 1 fourth. So we're going to have 3 fourths k2 equals 1 fourth k1. And then finally, you can simplify that. Notice the 4s are going to cancel, and then divide by the 3. Right, so k2 is going to be 1 third k1. Maybe that where you can see it. All right, so that's how the spring constant is related. Um, the spring constant of spring 2 is related to the spring constant of k1 if the natural frequency of um, that second system is going to be half of the original natural frequency. Okay, so key thing about this problem, to simplify it, was to do that equivalent k. Made it a lot easier, and we had to know about, you know, these equations here. All right, and like I said, those are just basic equations for a spring mass system. Okay, hopefully you found that one helpful, and um, I will see you guys next time.